Amen. Let's bow our heads, please. Our gracious and kind Heavenly Father, Lord, we are again humble and we are small in Your presence, Lord. Lord, we are here tonight with these men and heads down seeking guidance and leadership and wisdom. Lord, we ask that You'll be over this governing body tonight as they look and address the issues of the town of Tazewell. We ask that You'll give them the wisdom and the courage to make the decisions that are not only in the best interest of our community, but also in Your eyes. We ask that you'll give all everybody safe travels back to their homes, and we will give all the thanks to you. We ask all this in your name and pray. Amen. Amen. First, I'd like to start with uh, probably my favorite part of the job, and that's recognizing the young people that are in our town community. So if I could get the uh, eighth grade girls basketball team to come up with the coaches. All right, girls, eighth grade, come on. Come on. Middle school. Middle school. basketball team of Tazewell, Virginia experienced an outstanding 2018-2019 year and whereas the TMS 8th grade girls basketball team led by coach Derek Pridgen and coach Whitney Saunders completed the 2018-2019 year with an undefeated season and whereas the TMS 8th grade girls basketball team performed with exceptional teamwork to remain undefeated and did so with exemplary behavior reflecting on all fans, students, administration, and staff of the Tassel Middle School Bulldogs. Now, therefore, it be resolved, I, Michael F. Hoops, Mayor of the Town of Tassel, Virginia, with the citizens concurring, do hereby command and congratulate the TMS 8th grade girls basketball team for a job well done and best wishes for continued success in the future. Adopted this 19th day of March 2019.
what you do, Ramo. <laughs> Right, next on the agenda is a presentation by Derek Mays for the Police Department Accreditation Award. I'm not used to clearing a room with people like me on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I am really losing my touch with this job. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, I am Derek Mays from the Department of Criminal Justice Services out of Richmond, Virginia, and myself and Virginia Law Enforcement Professional Standards Commissioner Chief Ricky Allen from Whitfield Police Department. Um, we are here tonight to present the Tasmanian Police Department with the Accreditation Award. Being a part of accreditation is a very strong thing. Um, Tasmanian, I know these guys well. I've been harassed by them. I'm still being harassed by them. And uh, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> Y'all know, right? Okay. So, but it's an honor to be harassed by such a fine group of people. And the best part about my job is sometimes you can build a working relationship, and then sometimes you build a working relationship that develops into friends. And that's what I have here in Tasman. There's a bunch of friends. So it's a great honor to be here for this. But before I say too much, I'm going to chief up. <laughs> that's a first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when this came up and we knew that Tasby was going to be receiving her accreditation. I begged Derek, I want to be the commission that makes helps make the presentation in front of you guys. Um, because as an assessor, I cut my teeth on Tasby. I was uh, the team leader or for one of their assessments and then I come back four years later and, and did their assessment again. I've been here for many mocks and, you know, greatest hospitality in the world, thanks to Florida. Oh. <laughs> they can't do this. We know Dave Mills is the chief, but she's the boss. Oh. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> and I want to say this about the accreditation process. It's not an easy process to obtain. Uh, just the mere amount of proofs that you have to make available and be aware of and make sure that you show it in the files and the folders and your daily work and with the uh, making sure the officers adhere to it. There are 190 standards and on top of those 190 standards they are further broken down into 555 bullets. That's just for one year. And Tazewell was able to do that times four years and stay on top of everything that they did. So, uh, and Mr. Mays also has a letter that he would like to read to you. I'm going to let him read that now. Chief, come on, please. This letter is from the director of the Department of Criminal Justice Services. She could not be here tonight, but she is going to address the Tazewell Police Department with their accomplishment. March 5th, 2019, Channel Tazewell Police Department, Attention Chief David Mills. Dear Chief Mills, the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services would like to congratulate you and the Town of Tazewell Police Department for your successful assessment to become Virginia Law Enforcement Standard Commission's Accredited Law Enforcement Agency. Becoming an accredited agency is a milestone event maintaining the 190 standards that cover over 700 areas of compliance can be a very daunting task. The town of Tazewell Police Department met those standards and stands as a beacon, and they truly do. They stand as a beacon for other law enforcement agencies in Southwest Virginia that, are, that seek to achieve this status. We at the Department of Criminal Justice Services thank you for your dedication to the accreditation process and look forward to working with our relationship in the future. Signed, Shannon Dion, Director of the Department of Criminal Justice Services of Virginia. Jesus is for you, just one. Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Mayor. We got a little bit more. <laughs> and again, I want to thank you all for having me here. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to read the plaque to you and I'm going to present it to the Chief. Um, this says, uh, the Certificate of Accreditation this document certifies that the Tazewell Police Department came under the Virginia Law Enforcement Professional Standards Commission 
on January 24th, 2019, and it has met the requirements set forth by the commission and is therefore certified as an accredited agency. Chief. and I'll get them to turn your way. Turn around and face. There you go. Can I get Sean and uh, yes. Stan to come up? Can we can we do one in front of you all that you all standing there? Okay. Yes, Would that be okay? Yeah. Census. There will be some new things that will take place this census, though. 
Uh, we have been maximizing our outreach and using both traditional and new media. Um, so that is something new you will see. We're offer offering and encouraging people to use a secure online response option. This is the first time the census has been, uh, will be conducted online. There will be an online telephone and a paper option to complete, but we are encouraging everyone that can to go online and complete the census. We're also providing our field workers with handheld devices for collecting and census data information. So uh, some of our workers are going out will have iPads and some of them will have iPhones. So whenever they're conducting uh, the numeration, they will actually be able to just put this information in instead of it being on paper. And we are utilizing automated systems for our recruiting, training, and paper purposes. So everything is kind of uh, going online, but it, it has been easier. And um, this just kind of gives you a timeline of where we're at in the process. Um, from now through October of 2019, we are working on the infield address canvassing. We are currently recruiting for address canvassing folks. Um, we are looking to at least hire um, 30 to 40 people in the area. So um, we are interested in, uh, if you all have um, job fair opportunities, any way we can get this information out, what we would like to do is hire locally. Hire local faces, so when they go around and they're talking to your neighbors and your friends in your community about providing their information to the government, these are trusted faces and voices here in your community. In February of 2020, we will start um, our group quarters count. And this will be our prisons, our jails, nursing homes, uh, different facilities as that. So some of the folks that have come on um, in the address canvassing hiring uh, could have an opportunity of continuing to work different projects throughout the census. Um, so, you know, we're trying to uh, think smart and utilize these folks uh, with the training that they have. April 1st, 2020 is actually census day. Um, that, you know, we're really, that will be the day we're really trying to motivate everyone to complete your census, complete your census. However, the internet self response will start in March 2020. So they will have a uh, good window there to be able to complete the 2020 census. Uh, the online response will run through July 2020. And then at that point, that is whenever we will update the information and look at who's responded and where they responded at and where more help is needed. And then that is where numerators will go around from board to board and start counting folks. And that will pick up in April 2020 and then we'll run through July 2020. So that just kind of gives you a timeline for what the census will look like this time. Um, listed here is jobs that we are posting, uh, are posting in um, the usajobs.gov website as well as the 2020 census uh, jobs link. Um, you will see all of these jobs posted there uh, all the way down from you have the area census office manager all the way down to your recruiting manager. Those are local office positions. And, um, even though they will be servicing out in the field, um, our local office is in our mode. But whenever you look down below that, a recruiting assistant down, we will be hiring those people here locally. There's going to be 13 managers positions in the local office that will be covering the area. Uh, recruitment has, uh, you know, already started, so we're already doing that. We want to uh, go ahead and hire as many as we can for the address case, and we have a lot of work to do. Um, I'm speaking with your mayor here, and you all did participate in Linda with the address case, correct? We did. So, somewhat ahead, but still a lot of work to do. Um, these folks, for what I have been told, uh, the address came in positions and we start working in June, so we don't have a lot of time, so it's, you know, just really getting all those efforts to get people to apply. Everyone who applies, they have to apply online, and that's the website in order for them to do so. Um, if they need assistance, there's a um, HIPAA member there that they can call for assistance. <coughs> And these positions pay uh, really well. If you'll uh, look at the screen, you're looking at anywhere from about $13.50 to $19 an hour um, for the local jobs out in the field. And then the office positions, they go from $19 to $25.50 uh, an hour. What I uh, am here today for and really need your help with is I uh, created what, we, what is called the Complete Count Committee. Okay. What the Complete Count Committee will do is they will encourage your residents to respond to the 2020 census. Um, 
this will consist of government and community leaders, businesses, media, education, health care, and other community organizations. If you look on page 11, there is an example in the book of what a committee would look like. However, we want to create a committee in your area that uh, will be effective for your area. So it doesn't have to look just like that one, That's, but if that is an example of what all things look like. What the committee would do is they would develop and um, get out a simple message that the 2020 census is coming. This will be your awareness campaign for your community. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get citizens to, um, to come familiar and be educated with what the census is and why it's important to do the census. Okay, with the positions uh, that we will be providing, um, the complete count committees, they, they will really be encouraging the community. The, the folks that are out in the field, they will be collecting your information for addresses. So once we actually created a committee and got focused on what areas need the most work in your community, then we can go back to the census and say, you know, hey, we've done this work. What's this looking like? And the census can come back and say, okay, this is working here. Now we need to move on and do here. These workers will be able to keep the addresses updated so we can make sure that we're getting the right targets. So the committee stays focused on what we need to do um, in each category to be effective. There is uh, three steps um, that the committee will help with. And the first step is the education phase. And that's going to run through September of 2019. And that's basically the committee coming together, figuring out who it is that you need to be on your committee. And then this committee will start educating the communities in these, in these certain groups. After September of 2019, then we'll move on to the motivational phase. And this is where we're trying to motivate people in the community to complete the census. And then the motivation and action phase. And that will run through June of 2020. And that's just where we're trying to get everyone counted. We're trying to still get out there, set up opportunities for folks to get out there to complete the census. Again, this is uh, kind of a layout that you see on page 11 and what a uh, committee is made up of. Um, again, this is only an example. Uh, a committee can have whoever you know, the town thinks that would be beneficial to getting the job done, get everyone counted. Okay, now this talks a little bit about how local governments uh, can collaborate with the U.S. Census Bureau. And these are just a, a few of our needs that, um, that we can do some help for. Just operational support, if you have space that can be used for testing, onboarding, or training after we hire folks, we're looking for those types of things. These spaces, um, if they consisted of um, computers, um, could be at your libraries, your school, if you had a resource center here locally. If those spaces are available, if we just knew about those, that would be a big help. Uh, provide a list of residential institutions, so if you know of group quarters that are here locally, if, uh, if you would inform us of those, we can be sure that they are counted. Uh, provide a list of shelters, service providers, and uh, transit locations. That's just so we can put out some flyers, get some information there, make sure that everyone is seeing uh, the information on the census and that they understand the um, understand the census and this information will provide easy uh, to read materials. We need to make sure we get those out. Um, if you could promote temporary job opportunities, again, if someone's coming in doing the address canvassing, you know, they could be, their name could be put back into the pot again and get for another project. So this could go on throughout the census if they're selected. Um, the, well, clicked off. I think it's went to sleep. Um, <laughs> just the promotion uh, supports, um, you know, just getting the community together and really engaging with the community so they understand. You know, we go all year around and we tell folks, don't give your information out, don't give your information out. And now we're stepping up to them and saying, that, oh, we're the government and we'd like to have all your information. So we just want them to know that it is easy, it is safe, and that it's important. And that is the message that we're trying to get out. And that will be the primary focus of what this committee would do. Um, if you have any more questions, um, 
again, I left you with the book, but if you have questions outside that, please contact me. Mr. Mayor, anything I can do? I also want to mention that it's confidential for 72 years. Thank you. Thank you.
the first request I have is for the use of Main Street on that event date. Um, if you can see on your map, originally our boundaries um, were going to be, we were going to request that they extend it all the way down to the end of um, the front porch and the outer edge of seven. Um, I corresponded with those businesses and opted to condense that, narrow that space. And if you can see the arrows, I've, um, that's, that's where I'd like that space to be. So the front porch is business front and then road parking are certainly <coughs> open and, and same goes for seven. Uh, the second request I have is for the uh, permission to serve alcohol at, at that event. Same as we've done the past three years. Um, that's of course following Virginia ABC protocol and that will be closer to the <coughs> And the final request I have is for um, the, the continued support of the towns. Um, their support of our long-term financial goals, which uh, many of you, or some of you, or none of you <laughs> might know, that uh, that goal is to build a permanent farmer's market structure for the of farmer's market. That, that goal is still very much in its infancy. And if you could see on your um, expenditure sheet, the current bank balance, that uh, the fee charged by the town to, to reserve Main Street or use Main Street on that date would make a substantial dent in that, which would further um, keep us from, from that angle. So, um, if anyone has any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you. Well, I think the event's been wonderful. I've been, I've been at it, uh, it's been outstanding. The attendance has been good. Uh, absolutely, for C4, I mean, yeah. Chief, the chief. I think it's fine. Great. I'm on board. Great. Yeah. You need a vote. You get, got you, get, yeah. you get two votes. You have to, number one, to have the event, vote on that, and number two, the ABC. And she's also, number three, you have to either waive the, three, the fee. So you do need to address them all three sides. That needs to be a separate motion? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll make the motion that we have uh, allowed upon the table on September 21st. It's all on the table. I'll say that, that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Thank you. Proceed. So, uh, I'll make sure we serve alcohol. I'll <laughs> second it. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of serving alcohol? Aye. Does anybody want that motion to play out? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies <laughs> want it. I'm out of an ABC license. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. With an ABC license. Yeah. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Both those? And you've got a request, and our other request was to waive the fees. To make that motion. I second the motion. All in favor of waiving the fees? Aye. 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 Thank you. All opposed? <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. There you go. Sean, uh, would you give us an update on the YMCA? Hey, Sean, how's your show, buddy? I'm Sean Durham, and uh, I'm the executive director of the Four Seasons YMCA, and uh, that is still a miracle in work right here in the town of And I'm very grateful to be here and uh, be before town council. Uh, I like to come back a couple times a year and give you an update. I always like to talk about the good news and the why. Uh, because it truly is still a miracle every day. We are quickly approaching our 10 year anniversary in June of the 27th. <laughs> and we could not do that without the continued support of the town and uh, all of its residents. Uh, we are truly, truly blessed. I went to Roanoke a couple of weeks ago and toured three wives, and uh, one of them was a brand new $40 million wives. Yeah. And when we walked out, we got to the car and went, ours is nicer. <laughs> so on top of the 10 years, so I just want to tell you about some of the good news because it is exciting. 10 years, who ever thought we had a YMCA in the town of Tazewell? What a great thing. Um, 
we are closely approaching the one millionth person walking through that door and scanning in if you want to work out. And we don't scan everyone that comes in. We had a basketball tournament last weekend. And if you miss that, you really missed out on it. We had a packed house of 350, 400 people on Thursday night and Friday night. Uh, none of those folks are counted in that million. So there's been more than a million people through their stores, but gaining in each day. So uh, we're getting really close, but we're a little afraid to tell folks how close we are because then we think people are going to start asking us every day. <laughs> we're up to, we're up to, but we'll have a big celebration when that happens. You know, last year we had over 2,000 classes uh, of exercise classes, uh, hundreds of games for youth and adults going on out there, but there's so much more that goes on at the YMCA, and I've, I've talked about that the last time I was here. Uh, it's not so much people trying to lose weight, people trying to lower their blood pressure. It's about being a part of something bigger than yourself, and that's me and you and being a part of this community. And uh, we can't do it without the town. We're very fortunate. Mr. Day came out and he spoke with our board a few weeks ago, always supportive and encouraging, and uh, you all got a great guy right there leaving this town. And also, me and Ben, we get together every once in a while here in the last few weeks and try to do something collaboratively to where we can come together and, and see what we can do there. Uh, you know, we employ a lot of folks in the town, a lot of young people. Uh, the wise three main focuses is youth development, and a lot of that youth development is not sports, it is becoming a citizen and uh, being productive. So, we employ a lot of kids, and we just recently had a lifeguard class. And uh, you don't think that's a big deal to have, but I'm pretty sure we supply to every municipality from Mercer County to Buchanan County uh, in lifeguards. And uh, they're able to do that because we have an indoor facility that is top notch. And so everybody has plenty of lifeguards. Um, we, uh, this Friday, one of our big events coming up is our Scripps Spelling Bee. It's at Southwest Virginia Community College. It's for all the middle school students in Tazewell County. So if you're not doing anything, 6.30 on Friday night, come down and see Tazewell County's brightest students compete. Uh, it really is something to see. And uh, the winner gets a trip to Washington, D.C. over the 4th of July to participate in the National Spelling Bee. And uh, we've had a two-year reigning champion out here. She's not eligible. She's finally in high school. But uh, you hear her brother, who got runner-up last year, he's in it again this year. So uh, that family may be going back to D.C. And then the next Friday night, which is the 30th, I believe, we have our first prom. We wanted to focus a little bit more on our seniors. We've got a great demographic of those folks out there. Now, I don't know how we're going to get them back that late in the evening. Um, and one of the first things we did, because the seniors are a focus to us in our new strategic plan, um, we set an age limit and we were immediately contacted by lots of folks much, much younger. So, uh, you know, I, I was fortunate I got to go to proms and uh, married the girl that I took to both of them. Uh, but I found out a lot of people, because of circumstances, never got to go to prom. So we've had folks reaching out very, very young and said, I never had an opportunity. Am I not old enough? Uh, so we've opened it up to everyone, and I'd like to invite you all uh, to come to that. And, you know, the other only big thing that I want to tell you about is uh, this Burks, Burks Garden to the Breaks initiative that's going on. Uh, that thing is, is picking up some speed, and uh, it looks like we're going to eventually get a spur off the Appalachian Trail, uh, which is kind of unheard of because uh, the AT people don't like to move the trails. Uh, but it looks like we're going to be able to get a spur that will come from Burke's Garden and it will actually come to the backyard of the YMCA. So we can build a little hostel there one day. We do have a bus. One of the requests from someone on the board when we bought the bus was that we become a AT friendly town and, and offer that as a shuttle. So uh, it's 11 miles from Burke's Garden to the back of the YMCA. So it's a great day hike, and uh, we'll try to promote that up and, of course, promote the pastor. But we're just very thankful for you all uh, and your support. I'd like to see you at the Y more. Uh, if you don't see me, I'm there. Um, Ten years, and uh, I got to thinking, you know, a million people through the doors, a lot of long days. I lived there about five years. So I consider <laughs> myself uh, at least a part-time resident of Tazewell, and uh, you all are always very kind and good to me in the Y, and I appreciate you. Thank you much. And I have something for each of them, too. You uh, know, I can't get a one-mile trail in the deep in the left. Hey, Sean, if you don't care, I know it's not the time when you talk, 
the council and everyone here about the good news of what's going on at the college as well? Yeah. Oh, I'd be glad to. I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm sure Dr. Wright's been here and spoke to you all already, right? Yeah. What do you guys need to have? Uh, new president of the college is Tommy Wright. Please come to the prom. Now you've been asked to the prom, so don't <laughs> that. Um, Tommy Wright has brought a lot of energy to the college. Uh, and, and one of the big things that he did was the announcement of the athletic program. So he got 11. And they were bringing recruits in from everywhere. Every day on the ground down there are recruits coming in, not just from the state of Virginia. Uh, there were kids there this weekend from Tennessee. Uh, so they're going to need housing. They're going to need places to live and those type things. But one of the things that that has brought on is athletics is an upgrade of all those facilities down there. Uh, we have a, a, a wonderful agreement with the college. Uh, we provide a management service down there, and we don't pay a whole lot to make the thing. Uh, we will pay electric bills and those type things. We're providing a service there for them, so it's a true partnership. But uh, they are upgrading the entire facility. They'll have a brand new basketball gymnasium floor there. Uh, it's a, a, probably about a $400,000 project, new scoreboards and all that stuff. But they'll be able to host major high school tournaments. They even want these uh, teams move into regional play. They can't play in some of the smaller gyms. So they'll be able to host that stuff there. Um, they're also upgrading all of the fitness facilities, which is the wise managing that. We're very, very happy because I've put a Band-Aid on everything down there for five years. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's well overdue. You know, it's 20 years old, 22 year old building. Uh, but uh, lots of excitement down there. Uh, Tommy Wright has uh, really been supportive of the Y. I think he served on our YMCA board down in Tennessee. So the first time he came into the college, he looked around and he went, this don't cut it, does it? Doesn't. So we're going to get those upgrades. We'll have something really proud to be of and have down there. And nobody realizes how many folks from Tazewell that joined this YMCA come down there occasionally and get a workout when they're traveling, when they're going to work, or that type of thing. Uh, so it's really neat to see. Uh, it's been a great partnership with them, and uh, hopefully we can continue it. But I want to see y'all prom. Now <laughs> listen. You don't have to wear any tucks, but you have to put on your nicest duds. And, uh, come on out. We're going to have some food and some music and some fellowship and love on each other. That's great. Appreciate it, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda, a record department update. So um, as a kid, I kind of just want to give an update on some activities that are going to be done throughout the summer leading into basically the fall. Um, obviously, the weather permitting has always been in our favor. But uh, for ones that are going to be going on going through the summer, uh, so far we have night nice swim, something that's been frequently requested by a lot of people asking, you know, when can we open it up for, for night nice swim? We did it one time for, for after a football game last year, and it was a cold night but the water was warm. I, don't, I didn't argue, I thought it was cold, but they loved it. They had a blast, they had a DJ there, and they, they just asked me if they were going to have the next one. So we're going to start having those every Monday and Wednesday, all summer until the pool closes, uh, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And it will be a separate cost than actual day fees. The uh, reason for that is if we keep it open longer, we have to bring in some guards for a longer time and get more chemicals at night. Um, chemicals lead up to the budget for the pool a lot and we do have to apply it manually and the sun kind of eats it up throughout the day. So we just thought of a $3 price entrance fee for nice one for two hours and then and those are completely separate from summer passes and day passes. Uh, for the, another one that I'm excited for, um, heard a lot of feedback about it, fishing tournaments. Um, at least once a month starting in June through October, I want to put fishing tournaments up at the park uh, nothing extravagant, obviously, you know, we don't have these giant fish swimming out, which we do, but not at, at the amount of as, you know, play the lake or anything. But something to get people out there, um, just to go out there, you know, come out to the field, or sorry, the field, the park, the aqua park was there, so it'll drive more people to see. 
I think well, it shouldn't be an issue. I talked to uh, the game board and shoot, and he said the aqua park shouldn't have any effect on it as long as obviously they don't fish near it, no hooks near it. Uh, the rules and regulations, I have a big list of that. I know about 45 yards, 45 feet or something like that from each other have to be, and that will be applied to the aqua park as well. Um, the, so the entrance fee so far what I have is $50 a boat if they want to put it in their boat, and that's just for one person, or $25 for somebody who wants to fish in the bank and do it. Um, the winner will obviously get the whole thing. Uh, we're not trying to make money off it. It's more just to kind of give something for the people to do. So, and basically we'd also, from the budget, we put $100 from the park, add on to whatever they went. So it'd just be take it all, and again, that'd be every, mo every single month, once a month. With the exception of October, I want to hold a two-day one to where they register for a Saturday morning, go from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., and depending on how many we have, the top, say, 10, 15, or 5, will be invited to come back Sunday for the championship. So they'll have to come back for two days, same way. We I haven't decided yet want to do weighing or just length. Probably weighing is just with the most recommended way to do it. But then again, that would be a little bit more in terms of the entry fee, and then the winner would take that off. Um, and I'm excited for that one. I think that will take off, and that could be something that every year that we'll be looking forward to. We can actually put it on the website as get ready. You know, it's coming. It's that time of year again. Some event ideas which will be scattered throughout the summer. Um, based on schedule, whether it's softball, soccer going on. Um, one of them is Taste of Hawaii. Um, I went there for my honeymoon, and I absolutely love the stuff they did. Oh, can you get ready? I had But they had, they, this, the game they did was such little space. So I would like to do something like that at the pool. So where we bring a DJ, obviously get Hawaiian theme going, get some areas with sand, put something there for people to take pictures, have a bunch of mini games, and then even cater. A uh, big thing in Hawaii, they have a bunch of pork at their luau. Um, looking into it with the, the fishers, see if they'll cater for that, and have a giant pork thing there, or you know, it'll be just a flashy show, again, for all ages, but something that's a night swim. Um, utilizing the pool and utilizing what a lot of people want to do, which is night swim. Um, another one which utilizes the pool as well is movies on the water. Um, obviously the deep end would be closed off. We would have lifeguards present to make sure it stays that way. But we purchased a bunch of flat inflatables, whether it be beds, little buoys, or whatever they can sit on and play a movie, turn the lights off, it would be pitch black, and have a movie playing while they can sit at the pool. While offering different drinks and sessions would be available as well and just kind of giving them something new to experience. Um, another big one, which would be more of a summer finisher, uh, I call it fun in the sun. Um, basically holding inflatables, different, basically a big activity thing throughout the park. Just close out the whole, all both fields, leave it open to the public, and just come in and kind of celebrate the end of the summer. Uh, you know, having a good summer, hopefully with all these events, bringing out good people, just ending it off with some big event for the kids, having inflatables, not inflatables like the water, but you know, obstacle courses and stuff like that, base painting, uh, egg race, you know, egg carries, egg toss, all that stuff. Just did a little thing that kind of seen, I think it would just hit off great, and you have all the space to do it at the park. Um, so that, again, again, that's kind of a summer finisher. So kind of towards September, the weather maybe, maybe in October. Um, now a big one is an event that I'm excited for. I've been looking into this a lot, and I think it's something to take off. Is I'm not sure if you all have heard of the Spartan races. I mean, they're pretty big. Well, they do something, it's, a, it's called the Spartan Trifecta. They have three separate races that have to, they coincide with each other. And they've done three different times of the day. I'm sorry, different times of the year. We're also ready to do it for the summer. But I'm in communications with Bluefield Parks and Rec, uh, Virginia and West Virginia, uh, Richlands, and obviously myself, to hold three separate races and kind of have the same concept. Now when they do this, they're each different races, so they're not all 5Ks. So for example, we did the Mountain Mudder one year, which I intend to bring back this summer. But I'd like to utilize that for more than just one race. If we put that to Richlands, I've talked to the directors in both places, have Richlands do their own separate 5K or whatever they want to do, something unique and then have us do the mountain mudder, which is more of a physical demanding obstacle course, and then say Bluefield does something with Mitchell Stadium that they can get, or even Bowen Stadium. For baseball, have a stadium obstacle course. Something along the lines of what Spartans do, and getting a medal. So the medal that they do for Spartan race, which something is pretty simple, is after they complete each race, they get a third of a medal. So, you know, if they complete the mountain mudder, they'll get a third of the medal, and if we can get them customized, having something to represent Tazzle. So the Tazzle will be on that medal. Same with if you go to Bluefield, at the end you get that piece of the metal. Once they complete all three, you have all three pieces of the metal. Then you can wear them all at the same time, or you just put them all together, they should fit like a puzzle. And I've looked at a bunch of places for that, and I'm pretty sure that's possible. 
Um, like I said, there's a lot of plans to go into it. I haven't decided whether to make it a weekend thing or a three three weekend thing or just once a month. That was tense because I'm trying to get people from Bluefield, Richlands, Castle to travel around, see different parks, and get more people talking. And I think this will be something that if it takes off and it's done right, it'll be something that they're going to look forward to every year, something that people will travel to to kind of get all three pieces of that medal. It's a lot easier than Spartan races in terms of the Spartan races are by states. They can happen by state certain races. Here we're just having it in three different locations, three different park and rec locations, and kind of you know, just pushing that to people to get to each spot, seeing it at the same time, the aqua park will still be running if we do it before fall. But I think this idea would take off. It's been a lot, it's been a lot of planning. I've been talking, I've been in support from the director of Richlands already, and Charles even talked about it from Bluefield. Haven't gotten around talking to Greg. He, uh, he hasn't gotten back with me yet, but they would be basically their own Bluefield, West Virginia, Virginia, we don't have four. Especially when it's not as nice as the trifecta that they walk back down and that doesn't work. <laughs> so the trifecta is kind of what we're going for. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a big one that I'm hoping to do by the end of summer. And obviously the ones we do have one on also are summer soccer. Um, we plan to start advertising for that in April, starting in June. And then once that finishes, after about six weeks, go into softball. Try to bring that back. Didn't take off last year, didn't get up teams. But I'm going to try again. I'm going to try to advertise a little bit more. We did a lot with the Aqua Park advertising. Been focused on softball, so I'm going to try to advertise a little differently for that. See if we can get something like that coming back to Castle. I know a lot of people love it, and um, a lot of other minor ones that I'm still working on. I'll have the exact dates, times, and everything probably by the first of April, which is when I want to start advertising and pushing it to everybody, so it gives people time to look it up, register, and kind of even call me and kind of get more information about it. But yeah, so hope it. So my plan is to get all this going and make it a year-round thing where people expect this every single year, summer, especially summer for the park. <laughs> You're going to be busy. Any questions? <laughs> what about good fishing, David? It's pretty good, David. I see him over here taking notes when I talk about fishing. I got that down. <laughs> so on the fishing terms, is it like catfish or bass or have you talked to shoot? Um, I talked to shoot. You said carp and bass are the best. Do it with. We have the lakes can get shocked in May, so we'll have a better idea of what we have and we don't have in terms of numbers, what we can put in there. And um, at that point, I can kind of make a better decision on what exactly it is. When are you going to shock the lake? Uh, in May. In May. That's what yeah, I was saying. May comes May 16th. After the lake went in person, we'll come to the So if it either, either one of them, you're going to demand the all live survival fish turn. So no dead fish, all of them return back to the Yeah, it's, it's catch and release. It'll all be catch and release. So they they won't have a weigh-in at the end. Well, that, that's what I'm trying. There's different ways of doing it where you can actually. I mean, the, the technology now. Most people just take a picture. We'll give them an actual weigh-in, and then they'll keep it and send it to us, so we can have it ready and we can put it in the case. Do just weigh the picture when it comes in. Oh man. But it's a lot of work. I mean, I'm excited. I think a lot of this will take on with that. I think it'll scale. Like a scale too. Yeah. I love the trifecta. I like it. Coach King was here, I forget, a couple months ago. Talked about having the regionals or districts or something cross country there this year. So you might want to just get up with him and make sure if okay. that's the case that you don't find up having a fishing tournament the same weekend as yeah. a bunch of buses. Yeah, definitely. He'll be here in April, by the way, before we all night. Coach King, some good stuff. Yeah. You'll be here, won't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love that trifecta. You know, if we can pull that off this summer, it'd be great. Yeah, I, that's something I kind of saw. If the trifecta doesn't get pulled off this summer just because of scheduling, are you still planning on having your mud run? Yeah, yeah, I still want to, I just want to incorporate a little more than just the mud run. Kind of yeah, for sure. That's a great level. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Thanks. Next on the agenda is the approval of minutes of February 12th, 2019, and the budget work session of February 23rd, 2019. I disapprove of the minutes where it said we didn't get out of here until 11.05. <laughs> 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 you disapprove of the minutes you disapprove that we didn't get out of here? Either way you want. <laughs> so can I get a, a motion to approve? So I, make, I make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? 
uh, approval of the financial statements and financial report from February 2019. Show me second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, so, uh, Ms. Brooks, will you give us an update on the Planning Commission Committee? Yes, sir. Um, the majority of the discussion centered around those wood, wood furnace rules and the, the smoke that being a bother to everybody. Um, and finally, the, the, finally, I think it was decided that well, before anybody gets really fussed at about it, there's going to be a letter that goes out that just suggests that you follow the directions that came with your furnace, telling you what to burn and what not to burn, and just see if they won't just follow the directions. So, and essentially that was probably table in it, don't you think? Table? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. I got one of those things. And, and, <laughs> you know, and it's cost a lot, too. <laughs> did, you, did you read the directions? <laughs> Nobody you want. Nobody didn't give me directions. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that will address some of the issues that we had that need to go. 
and it'll be coming before cancel again in April. Hopefully we'll more clarity. I Any mean, comment, questions? Okay. So uh, next is the approval of engineering services for wastewater treatment plant upgrade final design phase services. Yes, Mayor, if you'll recall, Cancel scored uh, three different engineering firms. You have those in your in your packet. Uh, the result of those score of that scoring was Thompson and Litton. Uh, so you've already kind of done the scoring. We just need an open approval from Cancel to approve the, the Thompson and Litton for that project. So I say. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> the, so next is the Board of Zoning <coughs> Appeals appeal update. Yes, um, some of the elected officials, if you'll recall, a while back, it's probably been almost a year ago, uh, the town council appealed the decision of the uh, town casual BZA with respect to the uh, uh, the rezoning, not rezoning, but the subdivide of a piece of property out of town castle. Just want to let you know that Brad Pye uh, abstained from that with the conflict, and our law firm is Brad, Brad uh, Rapp. Uh, it, it's been moved to May 3rd, I believe. May 3rd, so hopefully. Uh, at the June meeting, we'll be able to give you an update on how that works. Any miscellaneous items? I don't have any this time. Mm -hmm. The new business approved proposed project schedule for updating water line mapping, hy hydraulics, and leak detection project. You don't need to vote on that. Just want to kind of put that in there to let, kind of give you all an update on where it's going so you can keep up with that project. Is a donation from Trust for the Walking Trail. If you'll recall, during the unfortunate passing of David Nichols, um, there was uh, the amount of money that was left to the town table uh, for some work to be done in and or around Lincolnshire. I've been in communication for the last couple of weeks um, with some representatives of that trust. I've talked to Brad. And we will be receiving those funds to add to the trail uh, that's going out uh, through the barn property. We are still waiting on barns uh, to reply back to the contract they have. It. Um, so it's, they're on their plate right now and it has been for about three weeks, maybe a month. So we're still waiting to hear from me. But I've also, we have also applied for three different three other grants and I've talked to one of those funding agency agencies and I feel relatively confident that one of those is going to fund that project. So either way, that project will take off uh, just as soon as the Barnes family uh, signs that. So you and Chris will be happy. I think for a long time to come. Okay, next is uh, Approved Rural Development Resolution and Code of Conduct for Funding for New Police Cruisers. Chief Mayor. Yes. The governing body of the town of Tazewell, Virginia, consists of seven members in a duly called meeting held on the 19th day of March 2019, in which a quorum was presented resolved as follows. Be it hereby resolved that in order to facilitate obtaining financial assistance from the United States of America, the United States Department of Agriculture, Rural Development, to provide funding for the purchase of the police vehicle and equipment, the governing body does hereby adopt and abide by all the comments contained in the agreements, documents, and forms required by the governor to be executed. Be it further resolved that the town manager or mayor of the town of Tazel, Virginia, be authorized to execute on behalf of the town of Tazel, Virginia, to the above reference agreements, documents, and forms to execute such other documents, including, but not limited to, debt instruments, security instruments, and or grant agreements as may be required in obtaining the said financial assistance. This resolution is hereby entered into permanent minutes of the meeting of this board. So I read the certification part. 
I do. Then it's closed. Okay. No point. No. No employee, officer, agent, of owner shall participate in this selection award or administration of contracts supported by rural development funds if a conflict of vendors, real or apparent, would be involved. The above conduct was approved at this meeting held on. That's just for them. Okay. So that's all. Yeah. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. So uh, next we have the Commonwealth Transportation Board Resolution Recreational Access to Tazewell Lee Recreation Park. I yeah, just want to give Council an update. If you'll recall, Andy Cecil came before you a number of times over the last century that we've been working on. <laughs> you know, anytime you go after free money, you got to have public hearings and go through this process. And by the time you get done, you spend more money than the grant has ever worked. But we, we have obtained $250,000 in free money for that project. We've got a local match of $50,000. So, Total, total three hundred thousand dollars project is estimated at three fifty. But we've got some other funds and some local matches that will offset it. So I just want to let Council know that after I think literally three years that that process is finally coming to a close. There's some other complications that we'll talk about later with that project. But congratulations. By the way, that will fix that entrance coming off of Main Street, fix the exit, put two lanes back there, plus a sidewalk. Retain your road where it's falling in. So it's a good product, it needs to be done. There's, like I said, there's a complication we need to talk about later, but just want it's just an update. Thank you. Uh, it's spring cleanup, month of May. Just want to let Council know, unless you've got an objection, your staff has selected uh, again the month of May, and we will be advertising it on Facebook and the channel, the TV channel, everything for the free cleanup month. We'll advertise how we're going to do it. It might be, may be by area, may be as called in, but unless you've got an objection to that, I'd like the council to approve what you So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? Motion you care. Looks like me it is. Are you uh, getting that super thing from Richmond this year? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it'll be here uh, hopefully between April 1st and April 15th. Right, and by the way, Mr. Stewart is coming back. Okay, uh, next is the set the budget work session date for April 6th at 7 a.m. You know that April 6th date, that's a Saturday, and no, I'm just like the rest of you. I don't want to wait for Saturday. And, but if y'all want to do it on. I thought I saw 31st or 30th. 30th of March is when I saw it. Yes. Yeah. I have a conflict on the 6th. Yeah, same here. I'm going to be out of town next weekend. Okay. So, so if it's the next one, that'll be too late. Um, so if you want to do it one night during the week, which one is the 6th? It comes out over here at the 30th. Is it 30th to the basketball tournament in Rona? Yeah. I won't be here either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so two around on the 6th and two around on 30th. We could do the, the, the 13th. I can't it's do the So I can't do the 13th. How many of you can leave the evening during the week of 13th? Except Monday, or Monday, or Tuesday and Thursday. Except for Tuesday and Thursday? I'm good every day this week and next Tuesday. week. The the following the mayor I didn't bring my phone. How late are you going to be able to do it? I can do it as late as y'all are saying. I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I'm going to explain. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it that late. I'm not getting past my bedtime. I get it. <laughs> so we can do it at 6 p.m. on, on like a no. 6 30? Yeah. All right, how about a 6 30 on what day, Rich? You're so close to it. She couldn't do Monday. She's good as her first How about Monday? This coming Monday. What is it then? Perfect. The 25th. Perfect. Can't do Mondays. Let's do it. Let's do it. 
How about we each at 27? That's so good. 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 Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. I don't know. 27. So, Ron, I'm going to show you what you're doing. 630. Yeah, 630 good? 630. We'll sit down and remind you. Okay. I hope I'm going to go to church. I'll take your notes for it. I'll take your notes for it. Uh, so, did anybody sign in? Uh, does anybody here that didn't sign in but has something to discuss? Open up can of worms there. Okay, can I uh, get a motion to go to the executive session? I will leave as long as you want it before the next tomorrow. So, we're going to go fast.